welcome everybody to this uh, workshop on access to culture uh, for people with disabilities. Um, I think we're still waiting for a few people to slowly uh, come in, but before we only have one hour, so it's better to start now and then people can join us uh, on the way. So welcome, I am uh, Thomas Bicknell, I'm policy manager at EASPD and I will moderate this uh, session uh, for you. Um, the objective of the workshop is to try and show showcase projects which um, have worked, have helped to facilitate access to uh, cultural settings for people with disabilities and, and others. Um, and we will hear from four speakers coming from three different countries uh, and all coming from, let's say, different angles to this specific uh, topic. Um, in terms of uh, the dynamics, we will have the four presentations. Uh, and after that, we will have questions and answers for the speakers. So if you have any uh, questions, could you please put them in the uh, chat box that you can see at the bottom of your screen? Uh, and then at the end, towards the end, I will gather the questions and uh, make sure they are asked to the speakers. Um, in terms of uh, the, uh, the, the, the details of things, please make sure that you remain uh, muted. Uh, although you can, if you want, turn your video on, but it's important that you are muted. Um, so our first speaker is uh, Ana Isabel Violante uh, from the Culture uh, is also for us uh, project, which is a Portuguese award-winning project uh, about making museums more accessible. Um, so Ana, I will put your, uh, you can start and you have uh, 10 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, good morning to everybody. Uh, we are talking from Coimbra, that is a city, very beautiful city in the center of Portugal. Um, we belong to an organization that is APPA CDM of Coimbra. And um, we work with um, a range of people, with, especially with um, mental disability, um, from birth to the end of, of their lives. We bring you one of the projects that we are de developing from five years um, that um, consists in um, putting persons with uh, intellectual disability in contact with um, the art, um, the museums, um, and the other kind of art in the community. That project began, um, as I have already said, five years ago, and um, it was very important for us, and not only for the institution, but also for the persons with disability, because the problem of uh, intellectual disability is that uh, sometimes they are invisible and uh, very difficult for them uh, to go to um, regular places where people normally go. And it's why um, that kind of experience and that kind of um, uh, contact with the, the beauty of art and they can uh, touch, they can um, feel, they can experience and they can share what they feel um, over there was a very, very important work. Um, that um, was done for those years. That project now has uh, six uh, partners, all museums, uh, gardens, and so on, very important places here in Coimbra. And um, um, it's uh, splitting uh, for other places in the, in the country. Um, the professionals that work in the project um, we're giving training to other uh, professionals and the, they have uh, developed a, a kind of uh, manuals to help museums to guide people with disability um, to visit museums or to visit a garden or to uh, visit um, a science museum and experience what's going on. And I think um, that project that was uh, um, Im Im images that guide us um, was a very important project that was recognized by the um, Ministry of Culture. 
because it's the first time that in Portugal we have um, think about people with a disability going to those places. We have a small video. Uh, we have a, a video that explain how we do the work and uh, um, the impact that has on people that, go, uh, that are going to those places. I hope you enjoy. And if you have any questions in the end, we are here to answer you. Thomas, can you put the video, please? Thank you. Qual é que é o principal objetivo do projeto? O nosso objetivo era possibilitar o acesso aos espaços culturais da comunidade aqui de Coimbra às pessoas com dificuldades intelectuais que nós apoiamos aqui em contexto de cal, mas percebemos que é muito mais do que isso, ou seja, isso era o nosso objetivo inicial, mas quando nós começamos a empregar por este caminho, percebemos que o que é, o que cada uma de nós quer e tudo o que eles também querem é que a experiência em cada espaço, em cada conteúdo do espaço, seja significativa para as pessoas que nós apoiamos aqui e que elas se transformem, que essa transformação seja interior, mas que também seja visível para as pessoas com quem elas estão e para a comunidade. Quais as etapas de cada visita cultural? Então, nós começamos sempre com reuniões uh, prévias mas nos espaços, primeiro, uh, para vamos dar a conhecer se, for, se fosse o caso, entretanto eles já nos conhecem, mas vamos tentar perceber o que é que eles nos podem oferecer, seja, que recursos é que eles têm, uh, dar a conhecer também os participantes que vão, neste caso os clientes aqui do, do Cal São Silvestre, uh, ou seja, dar um bocadinho a coisas os perfis deles, características deles, algumas necessidades, uh, depois disso mediante, eh, ou seja, aquilo que eles têm para nos oferecer, organizamos, eh, a, ou seja, tentamos transformar alguma desta informação eh, em comunicação acessível. Sim, um, usando muitas vezes a leitura fácil, que é uma das ferramentas que é usada nas pessoas que não têm mais. Uh, e tentamos ver se há alguma dinâmica que possamos fazer, nomeadamente as mimetizações, alguma espécie mais sensorial quando ou seja, é, nos é permitido tocar em alguma coisa, ouvir. Uh, depois disso, cá uh, na instituição fazemos uma preparação com, com os clientes, ou seja, mostramos ao espaço onde vamos, uh, tem, tem, ou seja, não vamos propriamente ver aquilo que uh, vamos uh, observar naquele dia, mas tentamos explicar um bocadinho o que é que vamos fazer. Uh, para além disso, entregamos também os chamados bilhetes, os pontos visuais. Na visita que fizemos uh, ao Museu Machado de Castro foi uma visita virtual, tendo em conta agora a pandemia. Então diz, eu vou visitar o Museu Machado de Castro pelo computador no dia 22 de julho. Certo. Depois temos o dia da visita, não é? Onde vamos ao, ao espaço uh, e aí eles terão a oportunidade de observar, de experimentar, de, de tirar partido de toda, de toda a experiência. Uh, e as dinâmicas que foram programadas serão realizadas nesse, nesse dia. Uh, depois cá fazemos sempre uma sessão pós, uh, um bocadinho para generalizar uh, aqui os conhecimentos que eles também, aquilo que eles puderam uh, um, adquirir, não é? Portanto, e vivenciar. E a partilha entre eles do que é que sempre gostaram mais, o que é que não gostaram, o que é que foi mais significativo para cada um. E normalmente também tentamos repetir aqui a dinâmica que foi feita. Que foi está lá uh, como forma de consolidação da experiência que, que eles tiveram. Para vocês, qual é a importância da cultura para as pessoas com deficiência intelectual ou com dificuldades intelectuais de desenvolvimento? É a mesma das outras pessoas, ou seja, para nós o trabalho é muito importante, a família é muito importante, todos os aspectos da nossa vida são importantes, mas a possibilidade de, de aceder à cultura, de ser com os outros, uh, é importante para nós, que não temos deficiência, mas também para as pessoas que nós apoiamos, porque são pessoas antes de mais. Sim, aquilo que temos notado é que até que elas já não sentiam que pudessem ir a esses locais e neste momento, se, para além de sentir, pedem com frequência para voltar. Ou seja, significa que é, isso já, já, é, ou seja, já se apropriaram não é? Portanto, daqueles espaços é, e que gostaram. Portanto, querem voltar a repetir e ter essa experiência. Estamos no Museu Nacional de Machado Castro, junto a uma das obras trabalhadas por pessoas com dificuldades intelectuais e desenvolvimentais. Para a pessoa com dificuldades intelectuais e desenvolvimentais, uma obra de arte permite-lhe viver, expressar-se, comparar, intervir. 
é disto que estamos a falar quando falamos na cultura também é para nós. É disto que estamos a falar quando lembramos a PPA CDM e a equipa que trabalha com estas pessoas. Também o museu se preocupa e preocupa-se com estes nichos de pessoas por si para chegar ao objetivo final, que é trabalhar pessoa a pessoa, todos os cidadãos e todos contam. O que experienciam os utentes quando realizam estas experiências culturais? Todos nós experienciamos e vivemos as coisas de maneira diferente. Alguns até podemos expressar da mesma forma, podemos mostrar da mesma forma. Uh, o mais importante é que cada um, na sua medida, consegue expressar aquilo que gosta e aquilo que é naquele contexto. Uh, isso inclui a possibilidade de, uh, de perceber que aquele espaço também é para eles, sim, que a experiência em si é para eles e que o comunicar depois sobre isso também uh, é uma possibilidade, porque é assim que se tornam cidadãos, é assim que fazem parte da sociedade. Portanto. Thank you very much, Anna, for that. I can see a colleague in the background who I, I believe also worked with this project. So congratulations to, to all of you um, and for the video as well. Um, we will come back with a few questions at the end of the uh, session, if okay. So our second speaker is uh, Taig Crowley, who comes from the uh, Glucksman Gallery. Uh, Taig, would you like to uh, share your screen or would you like me to do that? Um, I, I'll try and do that then, Thomas. Thank you. Thank you, Ty. You have 10 minutes. Is that, can you see it now? Yeah. Super, thank you, Thomas. Um, so uh, it's it's such a pity we can't welcome you all to Cork this morning uh, on such a beautiful autumn morning and to our, our gorgeous museum, which you can see on the first slide here. Uh, the Glucksman is a contemporary art museum located on the lower grounds of University College Cork and we were opened in 2004 and we aim to be an internationally significant museum for the exploration, understanding and enjoyment of contemporary art. Uh, today I'm going to speak to you very briefly about some of the strategies the museum uses and has adopted and implemented to ensure that we are an inclusive space uh, and that we provide uh, creative and cultural opportunities uh, for all people. Now, I suppose it is important to start by um, by talking a little bit about the location of the museum, because we are uh, our, our approaches and our audiences are shaped by the fact that we are a university museum. Uh, this is University College Cork in the background. Um, uh, the museum's location is just inside the main gates of the university. And so uh, it's quite significant because it provides that space that links the university community to the wider community. Uh, for many people and communities, third level education uh, can feel out of reach. The university gates can present as a real barrier. Um, so by providing opportunities for people to come on campus to engage in positive experiences in the museum, we can, I suppose, lead to a great understanding that creative opportunities and third level education can be a possibility for them. Now, one of the primary functions of the museum is our exhibitions, um, and these exhibitions are temporary. Um, we run three a year. Um, and they are, the, are of contemporary art uh, by both Irish and international artists. And the exhibitions are thematic and they are developed in collaboration with colleagues across the four colleges of the university. Uh, and they explore wide ranging topics. So it can be usually framed around a question. So what is, I suppose, our understanding and how do we deal with illness, for instance? Uh, what is the impact of political borders? Uh, what is the influence of gut health on our mental and physical well-being? So kind of wide ranging. Um, these exhibitions present kind of cutting edge research that's happening within the university in a visual form back to the public to enable, I suppose, learning opportunities as well as being enjoyable and challenging and often moving. Now, our education programs um, respond to the exhibitions on display. So the content and themes of the activities shift from season to season. Our, our approach draws from Harvard's Project Muse, which was a research uh, project run in the States in the mid 1990s. 
a muse turned the focus from the subject or the team to the learner themselves uh, and to the connections that are based on the activity of learning. In this context, for instance, people who visit the art museum develop and reflect upon uh, their skills of observation that can serve them across all aspects of their life. Muses develop learning tools and educational approaches feature three focus, foci. So inquiry, posing open-ended questions without right or wrong answers, access, appealing, appealing to a wide range of learners, and then reflection, providing opportunities for thinking about one's own thinking. So an example of how Project Muse is implemented in the museum uh, is in this program here. Uh, now, the museum teaches across different uh, areas of the PhD, uh, with PhD students, MA students, undergraduate students, and also on the Certificate in Contemporary Living. Now, the Certificate in Contemporary Living is a two-year education program for people with intellectual disabilities designed for delivery in a third level setting. And it focuses on helping students develop strategic skills to promote self-reliance and independence and increase participation in society. The course provides structured opportunities for interaction between students with intellectual disabilities and non-disabled students. As such, it is about inclusion, not just about access. Uh, the visual arts module that we deliver uh, seeks to enable students to learn about art practices and develop creative techniques. Um, the module encourages students to learn about and discover uh, creative approaches that promote confidence and self-esteem. And it is built around Project Muse, those ideas of inquiry, access, and then reflection. The module concludes with an exhibition, uh, which allows students to present their ideas, their creativity in a, in a, in a civic space like a museum. Now, the Glucksman invites um, communities of interest and place to participate in workshops and curatorial projects that link contemporary art to the cultural, social and economic fabric of the region. We work with communities from all walks of life. Uh, activist groups, senior groups, ethnic minorities, groups in socially disadvantaged areas, and expert groups, etc. Um, our work with communities seeks to ensure that groups feel ownership over projects and that they are represented and heard through the work that is undertaken. Our approach to community based work draws from critical pedagogy, uh, a philosophy of education and social movement that developed and applied concepts from critical theory and related traditions to the field of education and the study of culture. Uh, it was, its founder is Brazilian philosopher Paulo Ferrer, who promoted these ideas through his book, uh, Pedagogy of the Oppressed. So the Glucksmann has taken elements of critical pedagogy and designed a set of guidelines that shapes our work with communities. Uh, and some of those guidelines are an opportunity to name, decode and redefine a social issue, uh, share discourse, everyone has their say, uh, collective ownership of knowledge. So the artist or curator isn't preaching, but rather it's kind of shared learning amongst the group. We look into possibilities, invite change. We keep it local, looking at the region, and then we provide an opportunity for a public discussion or public presentation of the work. Now, alongside this approach, uh, the museum has identified three priority strands so that reflect the values of the university as well as addressing some of the most urgent challenges facing contemporary society. So the strands are wide ranging, uh, but provide opportunities for communities and individuals to learn, share experience and offer new perspectives. So uh, one of these um, areas is equality and diversity. And we are proud to partner with UCC's EDI unit to promote and embed principles of equality, diversity, and inclusion across all areas of our work. Um, health and well-being. Uh, so we, again, we partner with healthcare professionals to produce exhibitions, projects, and workshops. Um, and these innovative projects marry science-led approach with artistic uh, approaches. Um, and the other strand we have is climate action and sustainability. Um, and we work closely with colleagues here in the university, again, in UCC Green Campus to develop uh, imaginative and creative projects from, for students, for schools, uh, and for community groups. 
so that's just a little flavor of some of the approaches we take here in the museum. Um, if you go on to our website, Glucksman.org, you can see case studies in terms of the work we do, some of the exhibitions that we design, uh, and the different approaches we take to, to be an inclusive space. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you very much, Taik, for that uh, presentation on your, on your work, which is very impressive to see how you how you have an overall overarching inclusion strategy and how then, of course, the inclusion of people with disabilities and in particular people with intellectual disabilities fits in, in that. I'm sure, I'm sure the participants have many questions for you in that regard. Um, so now um, we will go to our third speaker, Fabrizio Fea from uh, School of Viva in Rome. Uh, Fabrizio, would you like me to put the presentation? Yes, I prefer, and I just ask you when to change the slide. If Sounds good to me. Thank you very much. The floor is yours, Fabrizio. You yeah, thank you. Thank you, Tom. Um, hello. Lovely to see you so many all together with us in this, uh, in this workshop. At first, I would like to just introduce my center. My center is a center for persons uh, with uh, uh, intellectual disabilities. It's cited in Rome, and we have several ac activities. But one of the most interesting activities for our clients uh, is, uh, um, uh, is art. Um, but art, uh, uh, when we speak of art, uh, in this case, uh, as I always say, my clients uh, are real artists. So. It's a bit different from what uh, I intend as a rehabilitation for art. So two different things. In this case, we are speaking again of art. Uh, artists, as I said, we make performances in art galleries. We go outside, not only in, in, in the rehabilitation uh, center. Uh, next, and that's the reason why I speak always of art. Uh, Tom, please, can you give me the next slide? Yes, thank you. Uh, as you see, uh, what, I, what we say, it's art beyond all limits, uh, the development of alternative pathway opportunities, uh, exactly because, uh, again, we speak of uh, persons that love uh, art and they work on art uh, when, when it's possible. Uh, in particularly, what we do, and exactly what I would like to show you is uh, <clears throat> when we make a collective painting. We understood that working together, it's much, much better than just uh, work as in a singular way. Of course, our artists uh, create also their own paintings, but uh, one, of, uh, one of most important goals is to work together and to create collective paintings and murals. Particularly, we are asked uh, also from outside to produce the murals and I will show you a picture uh, just uh, a bit later. Um, we uh, studied all together with our artists as well, uh, in which way, uh, rules, uh, how to create a collective uh, painting. Uh, you can see here in the few slides that are coming from now, uh, the way we, we work together. We have a visitation of the place, we discuss together the theme, we, uh, study also how the elements can be represented. We work on that. Next slide, please. Um, we have free expressiveness, the calculation of the dimensions. Do we develop the project, we choice of the drawing. I will show you why. We study on the composition, we approval the project. We have oral color test. Next. Next slide, please, Tom. Thank you. Uh, then we organize all the materials. We full scale tracing on the project on the wall. We have an identification from the prototype of the imaging to be colored on the wall. We make colors. Then we have the teamwork and shift and the, we define the borders and the final dressing. Uh, the next one, um, as you see, when we have all these decided, then we work on that, we go on the place, and we make our uh, mural or our big painting. The next one, 
Um, yes. Uh, wh what do we do? Why we uh, talk about uh, art activities? Which are the main uh, goals, aims uh, of our um, of our clients? Um, these are the main points, and I think that with these points we can grow directly in what is uh, um, uh, what we what we know that. Uh, um, we empower persons with disabilities through art. These are their main points. To belong to the world of art, to have opportunities to enter the market of art, art uh, to be independent, social inclusion and participation, improve self-esteem, self learn more social and practical techniques, exchange experiences among persons with the same interest. Uh, we worked together to put these points down. Uh, the, su the suggestion comes from them. I want also to explain that in my uh, art atelier, we have uh, two uh, uh, art facilitators, but uh, as the name says, they never try to influence uh, what it will be the result of our, uh, let's call them masterpieces, masterpieces but they just help in supporting the artist. Uh, if they want to put two colors together that maybe, as an example, we don't like them, but they do like it, that's their own decision. So they are very much independent under that point of view. The next one, I will show you some um, activities that we do. Uh, for instance, you see this is the first uh, step when <clears throat> each of our clients just make a drawing with a pencil in a very easy way. Uh, next one. Uh, then they cut them, they put them together uh, to create the composition. Uh, with the next one, you can see next, uh, Tom, yes. Then once the draw is done, they have to make it uh, on a big uh, screen. And then they, they start drawing it only by pencil. And then they start afterwards, they uh, color it. The next one, yes, please. Thank you, Tom. This is uh, one of the results at the end. As you saw before, it was just the one done by pencil. And this is the final. Uh, it's uh, once it's colored. Next one. Uh, this has been done in the psychiatric hospital in Rome. Uh, that is not a psychiatric hospital. They don't exist anymore in my country since 1978, but it's used in a different way. As you see, they just uh, work directly on the wall. The next one. Um, this is a project, a starting project on the panel. Uh, I will show the final product of it. It's just green, uh, but you can see that inside it's already drawn. Uh, uh, the drawing of leaves and flowers. The next uh, now is uh, is colored. You see much more defined also the drawing. And the next, uh, they were working on it. This is my art atelier in my center, uh, Scuola Viva. And the next, we will see the result of it. You see, it was a little building outside, but it was very in our garden. But we didn't like it because it's just done in a very simple gray. Uh, and uh, you see the final result. The big panels have been put uh, to cover the, the little building. And the result, I think it's, it's great. And you can see them. And the panels are uh, done in painting that um, if it rains, of course, it doesn't, it doesn't disappear. Um, and so we we work also for 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 us uh, uh, for the pleasure of looking good things uh, around us. Uh, the next one, please, uh, Tom. These are some paintings just to show you the kind of colors, the strong colors they do like. This was a painting of a city uh, that could stand in a pillar in the center of the main square of this little village out of Rome for a, it was a performance of paintings. Uh, yes, okay, thank you. The next one is a jungle. Uh, 
you can you can put the next one, uh, Tom, please. Yes, you have two more minutes, uh, Fabrizio. Yes, thank you. Okay, uh, the next uh, is just uh, to show some of the paintings. Next one, please. Um, okay, thank you. Again, you can see the kind of colors. Um, next, uh, uh, strong colors. We also prepare paintings uh, well in glasses, uh, depending also from requests coming from outside. Next. Uh, the last thing that we are doing is uh, this kind of ceramic. Uh, we found some ancient way to do it, and we do it the same. It's a ceramic that doesn't go only in the oven, but it goes directly on fire. And the colors come out depending on what it happens when, it, when they burn into the uh, real uh, uh, fire. N uh, the next one is just to show part of my clients working on one of the uh, something doing together for with the uh, ceramic. Um, the next, uh, this is when we go uh, outside, we, we use it uh, to, to make the exposition when we sell them and when we go on market. Okay. And the next, uh, uh, okay, um, at the end. Uh, so I hope that uh, we will be able to travel again. And of course, I would love to see you coming to Rome, invited, and to show you the way they work. And they love to have guests every time that uh, we have the opportunity to have them. Uh, the next, uh, it's uh, if you want to have just the last one, uh, uh, Tom, please. Just to see if you want to pick down the name of the place uh, or uh, the data. Uh, and I thank you very much for listening and the time spent together with me. That's it. Thank you. And thank you, Tom, for your help. <laughs> thank you, Fabrizio. I look forward to the end of COVID so I can come to Rome, have a good uh, cup of coffee and, and come to you at Spot of Uno. For sure. <laughs> thank you. Um, so now to our uh, last speaker, uh, Anarita. Um, would you like me to share the presentation? Yes, uh, I will put also my clock going <laughs> so I don't lose myself. So Thomas, I will also ask you to put the next and the next. So um, yes, uh, uh, our presentation, uh, how can I present myself? I am, uh, I am Ana Rita Barata. I am a choreographer. Uh, I am a dancer and I am a mother of four ch wonderful children. So I have this wonderful project between my work and family project. I think they are very together. Um, and why they're very together? Because since I, since all my time, I've been always working with communities and families, families and family is also part of the communities. And, um, and that's why I think uh, 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 all this it brings together. So um, next slide, Thomas. So um, Sim, I, we, I, uh, I'm the artistic director of um, uh, Sim Dance Company. Uh, it started 12 years ago. Uh, you can see also the name Voart, which is the cultural association who actually manages and produces and has an office team that makes the Sim Dance Company work. And Sim Dance Company, uh, 13 years, uh, 12 years ago, um, actually wanted to be uh, wanted, and their goal, the goal was to be a professional dance company. So very fast we started with the work, uh, including um, uh, uh, including dancers, uh, professional dancers, and professional and interpreters with and without disabilities. And how we started? Next slide, please, Thomas. We started with actually um, uh, connecting to our partners, which was local partners with the Association of Cerebral Palsy in Lisbon and also a Center of Rehabilitation of Cerebral Palsy, Calus Gulbenkian. And then that has been also our partners to spread and, and to start this work in inclusive dance. So our main field was this um, to actually give and empower uh, people with disability and non-disability in the area of dance uh, of inclusion, inclusive dance. 
but the our main goal also was actually to bring it um, outside um, because we felt we were really into the box, into the institutions. Next slide, Thomas. And so, um, in a way, we really wanted to bring it. Um, uh, and we started with actually a dance, a dance street performance uh, with nine, nine interpreters and, uh, and was a very strong period of the very beginning of the company. But very fast we came and crossed ourselves with what was for us artistic quality to be a professional dance company. And that was one of our major points. So we knew we had to work on the field of multidisciplinary uh, work. So we had to invite artists to come in, uh, other you know, screenwriters, film directors, people connected to the field of arts and with several languages that could help and really reinforce the quality and the artistic language of the company that we really wanted to build in the very beginning. And so um, uh, out of this work and out of all these connections, can you pass to the next slide? Um, we, also, we also start to organize because we, we do this multidisciplinary work. We organized two festivals, one with Community Arts Festival, who actually does this link between community arts and movement with artists with, with disability, and another festival that connects dance and cinema, because it's also the area which we work with the company and as well with VoArt. Can you pass it on to the next slide? Thank you. And just to um, make sure also this was uh, a very important that really at the very beginning, we came across with a very pioneer work in terms of accessibility. So, for example, we were we had the first experience to make uh, the first dance piece in Portugal with audio description from blind dancers, a blind a blind audience. Sorry, and we came across with a creative project. We also included blind dancers in the performing arts and all these things came across to us and we really had to work. How do we do accessible work and how do we create accessible art and how do we also empower theatres to make their work and their programs accessible and that really started 13 years ago with also that. And um, I could say we are the only uh, one of the only projects, professional projects in Lisbon with uh, inclusive dance, besides also other uh, professional company in Madeira. And that was a very strong work. And in the very beginning, with all this kind of um, uh, thinking, how could we get to a larger audience and diversity audience, not just our own dancers with disabilities and non-disabilities, but also how do we engage the whole community and the audience, developing audience. So next slide, please. Um, and next slide, Thomas, thank you. <laughs> so for us, one more thing we really crossed was also one thing was the training. Where could people with disabilities have access to training? in dance and that was our one of our major and has it been our major concern the last time last periods also starting from the very little ones uh very 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 little ones so next slide thomas and so this is some of our actual uh educational project and our activities and and i'm gonna ask you to go to the last slide uh, with our contacts, which I, uh, Thomas, um, just to, to drop it. And I will let you to just see a video uh, of uh, a very short promo from one of our stage performances that's called Here. And it's a trilogy about uh, time, because time for me was something that I really learned with uh, bodies with disability um, uh, and, uh, and with and without time is a very special um, theme for me. So I, I pass on to Thomas to pass the video if possible.
thank you for for just uh, showing also uh, having the possibility to share with you and yeah uh, this is uh, oh sorry this is my clock <laughs> thank you thank you. thank you very much uh, Anarita for for that it's always very impressive to see how your project has developed over time and so you surely professionalizing training etc uh, look forward to the future so now we have around uh, 10, 15 minutes for some questions. I will, I think we have a few which we've seen. Uh, so I will go, uh, go through them. We have a question from Alex uh, Rebelo from uh, Portugal, uh, who's asking Anna, and I guess it's the first Anna <laughs> in the thing, about the main difficulties of the project and also about how to, what was the feedback of the of the people with disabilities who you supported to get in, in, in contact with the, with the museum? How did that uh, go? Um, for the people with disability, they are no difficult. Um, they love that. And um, I, I think we are, we are, we were talking about that and um, we are in the beginning of the process. Uh, five years, but we still um, changing mentalities, especially with, uh, with people with disability and also with families and also even with community. Because in, in the beginning, it was very strange that uh, people react, uh, react in a way that uh, they were very surprised and uh, what they are doing here. Now they, um, they, they think it's very natural. And the, and the regular people, they, they found out that uh, persons with an uh, intellectual disability, they can have a kind of uh, view of the world that is very sensitive and uh, that can uh, express art in a, in a very... And we saw Fabricio uh, and their work and they can express themselves and in a very extraordinary way. Um, for um, we, what we think it was the most important was the change in the community spaces, like the museums and the gardens and so on, because they, they are preparing themselves to receive all kinds of people. And that was the most important thing, um, was uh, um, the work that, that the museums understood that they cannot work only for um, normal people, but they can work and they have to be prepared to all kinds of people. And uh, we think that uh, that was the most important uh, work that we have done in the community and with those kind of, um, of places. Thank you very much, Anna, for, for that answer. Um, a second question now for, for Taig, I believe. Uh, what type of technical, technical or, and or technological support exists at the museum during the visits of persons with disabilities or intellectual disabilities? Is the, is the support permanently there? Uh, or, or is there a process where there are special visits, for instance, for, for people with disabilities? Yeah, so I suppose the, the challenge there is that our exhibitions are temporary and so are, are always changing. So the artworks on display will change from uh, every three months. So in terms of developing resources and supports that rely on technology, that can be a challenge, it can be a lot of uh, investment for such a short lived uh, thing. So what we decided to do was really invest in staff, train staff who would be there for every exhibition and that would respond to the needs of all visitors. So uh, whether that is a, a visitor with intellectual disabilities, a, vi a visitor with uh, sight impairment or or any other number of um, uh, needs. So that is the, the, the approach we've taken as opposed to investing in, in technology and, and technical supports. Um, in the main, our group, we would welcome groups. So in terms of the, the students who we work with, they would come as a group with support, support workers um, and uh, we would work with them in that, in that, in that way. I think that, does that answer? It does. Uh, interesting to see the, the, the focus on training the staff rather than on technology, which is uh, important, I think, there. Um, a question from Caterina for Fabrizio. 
uh, well, first of all, beautiful pieces, and I, I fully agree. Um, and what happens to the art pieces? Do, do the clients get part of the money uh, with invested in? Do you work with clients throughout the city? How does that how does that work? And also, does it lead to employment opportunities? Yeah, yeah. Um, first of all, just uh, in a nutshell, just to explain how uh, we um, how we are paid in in my center. My center is private but we work within the National Health Service and we are paid per project, per person. Uh, the money arrives from the region and the families do not pay anything. So it's public money, um, but the money is done, uh, let's say for, the, for a whole project called a rehabilitation project. But as I said, here we work more with artists than on rehabilitation, what it is, but that's the, the, I still have money for that, for them through the, the, the project that we send to the region and they agree uh, uh, for that. Um, but we also agreed together with, uh, with our clients that uh, as we do not receive money for art as it is, when we work for outside and we are paid for that, uh, the money uh, belongs uh, to the atelier, uh, the art atelier, to all of them, to buy uh, whatever we need to paint, to draw, because of course it costs money. And so under this point of view, they are happy and uh, in this way. So they don't receive uh, money. And of course I wouldn't like to give them pocket money because it wouldn't be so dignity. To receive that but in two times per year we have in christmas and in uh, spring we have a spring market and a christmas market the must the pieces that the, what is they are done the the handmade uh the handcrafts sorry uh are of them of course and they they uh when we sell them the money is, is them is there is is there is a their own money of what they have done. Sometimes they like to share money all together. And again, they put it in a, in a box or whatever. And that is money for all of them when they go outside or when they can enjoy something together. That's the way we can, we can uh, uh, work together with, uh, with them uh, using art. Because again, we don't receive money for, for that. Um, that is uh, the last thing I just would like to thank everybody because I saw uh, good compliments. I will bring them to my place when I will go back at the end of the conference. Thank you. That's it. Please do, please do, Fabrizio. And uh, I have a last question for um, Anarita. Um, and I think this is a question which happens for, for many artists. It's all about funding and sustainability of the projects, et cetera. Um, and so how, how is your project funded? I, I saw that there was uh, you know, concerts and exhibitions and, and theater pieces, and I guess there's money through tickets for that. Uh, but I, I, I suppose there's also funding from, from fundraising, from private individuals or from the state. How, how does that work? And what are the main challenges? Uh, so who art we still with is, who is the soul soul uh, culture association that produces and the office that produces sim dance company uh, has a, a fund from the national arts uh, government it's a four year program they co it's called the four so we apply each four years uh, and and yeah and next year is our last year and we will have to apply next for the next four years so all the projects that are within the activities which is one is that sim dance company um is mainly supported for the machine in terms of human resources to work then we do have to sell uh to sell our artistic product so uh, when i say professional dance company everybody is paid equally non-disabled and disabled so if we perform 
if we ever perform on ticket sales and everybody agrees it's going to be from the ticket sale, everybody gets equal from the ticket sales. If it's a fee from the organizer, we split it amongst every uh, every uh, every person from the team, whether if it's a dancer, a, a light technician, a musician. So it works as a, any professional dance company. We do auditions. We so we cast people. And so we do work on that Sustain sustainability. Uh, we we kind of we are engaged. I could say we try to be engaged in the political scene in terms of uh, having a repres trying that disabled uh, disabled artists can be represented in this area. But it's still a lot of work to be done. You know, I mean, there's so major basic things that they still has to be done. And one is about education because. For example, within our company, the dancers have, I mean, already, uh, they're already from a generation from 30 on. So there is, the youngsters have to come in with, and they will bring other tools. Because for example, with the pandemic situation, we had to really go to the very basic digital, uh, you know, learning, how to get Zoom, how to all these things. And so there's a lot to be done in terms of how, so that, how they can apply, how they can apply for funds. And um, yeah, we try to accompany some part of it, but in terms, in terms of, of sustainability, we do work a lot with national theaters or uh, local theaters, festivals, and and a lot with our educational project, uh, which now started uh, one year ago and uh, hosted is now, for example, works with seven students and they are on a program of two years programs, first years learning and second years professional activity. So that's this is how we try to develop um, and to get and to get attention to inclusion and to accessibility. So um, yeah, but there's a lot of uh, to being to work to be done also in terms of political and governmental um, support for uh, for uh, disabled artists. Still. Thank you, Anna, for a very impressive answer. Um, to see how how developed your system is, I must say I I, I don't know much about about the arts and inclusion. I must say in, in my speciality, but very very uh, impressive. And and now maybe to conclude um, this session, I'll try to take out a few points of that I took out of this of this session. Um, the first is how transforming the public space is so important to changing the mentalities of people, but of all who are involved in that process. And I think that's where arts has a particular role to play. Um, a second element is how uh, reaching out to others outside of our own little nest or our own little 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 box. It can be uh, uh, reaching out to museum, reaching out to, uh, to professional musicians or artists, reaching out to, or in the case of Fabrizio, the old psychiatric hospital, uh, etc. And really making making sure that the art that's being produced is 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 really inclusive and brings together all the different stakeholders. A third element which uh, Ty brought up was how important it is to train staff. Uh, so it doesn't always have to cost huge amounts of buying new technologies, new this. We can find innovative ways of doing it and training staff on, on even the basics of, of inclusion is, is key there. Um, and what I've noticed in all the different projects is that there's always a uh, process of continuous development. It's never ending. I, I don't think any of the four speakers here are just like, okay, we've done our project. That's the end. Uh, good night, and then and, and see you in, in the future. No, it's always changing, always new challenges, and always new opportunities. And that's, I think, the the, the process and the, the right spirit of doing it because you're not going to change art and inclusion in in one single project. It's going to take time, and and, and that's important. And the last point is the funding. Uh, always difficult, always challenging. Uh, in arts and also in, in the social sphere um, and the importance of having political commitment to support the projects that we're doing for the sustainability of it, especially in times of COVID, I think is even more important. Um, so uh, having political support is, is an absolute must. And we should, I think, uh, bring that to the plenary and bring that in our, in our conclusions of this report. Uh, I hope I brought most of the main messages. Would any of the four speakers have anything else to add? No, great.